Hello and welcome to the wild card round of NFL Game Picks. Guys, it's it's been quite the season. Um, you know the situation here. We have a Bears fan. We have a Packers fan. Uh, they're not in the playoffs. You know who is? Miami Dolphins. Uh, Miami Dolphins somehow squeaked their way into the playoffs uh, with a score that only the Dolphins can have clinching a playoff bear, which was... Uh, I believe six to eleven. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's tough, you know. It's awesome that the Dolphins made it to the playoffs. What does suck? Uh, they don't have their starting quarterback. They don't have their starting left tackle. They don't even have their backup left tackle. Uh, right tackle is out as well. Uh, the starting uh, safety Brandon Jones, he's out. CB two and CB three with uh, Byron Jones, Nick Needham out. Uh, you know, so there is a damper on this Dolphins playoff run. Uh, QB1, QB2. I, I don't know if I mentioned that before. So it is a damper on the Dolphins playoff run. Glad to be here, but it is what it is. Now we got to make the best of it. And hopefully the Dolphins can. They have a, a tough opponent ahead of them. Uh, but before we do that, let's go over this season's uh, rankings, like who was on top the entire season, which obviously if you guys have been following along, it's been Steve. Uh, but we'll get into the standings right now. Uh, but before that, I want to go to a quick question uh, to both of the guys. So, Chris, how are you feeling about the Bears getting number one overall pick? All right, he's quite literally dead. And uh, Joey, Packers just missed the playoffs. How are you feeling? Shocking turn of events, both guys. Dead, nowhere to be found. Uh, no, in all seriousness, the guys uh, couldn't. We couldn't line up our schedules. I was out of town pretty much all week, and as I got here, they all had to go back home visit their families. I understand that. Um, so is what it is. Flying solo today, and uh, don't mind it. It's uh, it's gonna be a little fun. We're gonna be creative here. So we're gonna go straight into the records for this season so far. Now, when we look at the leaderboard, Steve is on top. Who would have guessed it? No one. Uh, everyone knew that Steve was dominating the entire season. Steve had 178 wins, 93 losses. Did not eclipse 100 losses like everyone else, as you can see on the right side, uh, throughout the season. But, uh, you know, that's that's quite remarkable. Good good job, Steve. Uh, I was really wondering if your buddy is buying you steak or not, because I know you guys have that little initial bet of, you know, winner gets a steak bought for them at the end of the season. Uh, hopefully... Hopefully your friend comes through on that. But yeah, Steve went 10-6 and six last week. So did uh, Eddie, who is in second place, 168-103. Good job, Eddie. I'm right behind him. And guess who tied up with me? Matt. Matty Ice. Uh, so Eddie's 168-103. Me and Matt are 167-104 on the season. Uh, Chris, slowly but surely catching up. I think that Texans pick last week was really the difference because uh, it helped him become the best for last week with a 12-4 and four record. Um, and ending off the season with 160 wins, 111 losses. Right behind them is Joey, 159, 112. Uh, and then all the way at the bottom, we have Mark and DJ. Mark is 155, 116. Um, and then we have DJ all the way at the bottom. Come on, DJ, pick it up. <laughs> 152, 119. But I do believe uh, week 16, he had a week that he did not pick uh, any of the games, so not sure entirely what happened with DJ there, but you know it's tough. But look at the leaderboard, man. It's it's pretty close around the middle. The middle is honestly pretty close, and uh, Steve is ten games ahead of everyone. And then aside from that, we have one sixty eight, and then the lowest is one fifty two. So almost within twenty games of one another. I think the playoffs may swing some things around, but at the end of the day. Uh, Steve is going to walk away the ultimate champion of the league. Uh, but we'll have Eddie and myself really competing for that second place spot. Uh, Matt as well. And then, uh, you know, it'll be interesting. Uh, with that being said, I think we should no longer waste any more time and just get straight into the games. And uh, by the way, this is recording on Saturday, right before the kickoff of this first game, which is the Seattle Seahawks versus the San Francisco 49ers. San Fran is favored by nine and a half points, and the money line is at minus 500 in favor of San Fran. Over-under set at 42. 
San Fran has had one of the best stories throughout the season. Amazing defense and a plague of quarterback injuries. I believe it was week two, Trey Lance gets hurt, done for the season. Uh, he broke his ankle, unfortunate. Uh, goes a pretty long while with Jimmy Garoppolo, and then Jimmy gets taken out versus the Miami Dolphins uh, because he suffered a leg injury. Then the Mr. Irrelevant last pick of the draft this past year, uh, Brock Purdy, ends up coming in relief, helping them secure a win against Miami Dolphins in dominating fashion as well. It wasn't just that they were, uh, you know, just barely eking out a win, though. They dominated the Miami Dolphins. Uh, and they've been really good ever since. And Brock Purdy has shown resilience, and he hasn't really wavered in terms of showing that he's a rookie. He's been pretty efficient and pretty good out there. Seattle, though, has Geno Smith, who's having probably one of his best career years. Uh, he just set the record for passing yards for the franchise record for the Seattle Seahawks, uh, which was previously held by the previous um, quarterback in Russell Wilson. So, you know, big, big stuff coming from Geno throughout this season. Do they have enough to beat the San Francisco 49ers? I don't think so. And uh, guys, spoiler alert, neither one of the guys think so as well. So uh, that's how we're going around here. I'm going to announce all the guys' picks for all these games. And right now, everyone has picked the San Francisco 49ers. I think it's pretty much a no-brainer. Unfortunately for the Seahawks, as much as an amazing season they've had, uh, it's more than likely going to come to an end against this San Francisco 49ers. Mostly defense, but their offense is still good. They have a lot of key players that are really what is helping Brock Purdy have success uh, in this system. Now, with that being said, we'll move on to the next game. Uh, this is the 8-15 game on Saturday. We have the Los Angeles Chargers versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Ja so Jacksonville is surprisingly not favored here. We have the Los Angeles Chargers with a minus 1.5 spread, minus 140 money line, over-under set at 47 total points. And I was kind of shocked because the Jaguars have been looking good. And the fact that they're not really favored here is quite uh, shocking to me. But uh, we, got some mix, we got some mixed reviews here from the guys. Uh, but as I'm setting this up, one thing I'll say is the Los Angeles Chargers. Why the hell were you guys playing pretty much all your starters in a meaningless Week 18 game. It results in your second best, arguably, you're probably your best wide receiver getting hurt and possibly having a chance to not play at all in the playoffs because he fractured his back. In a meaningless Week 18 game. That is absurd to me. Brandon Saley needs to reevaluate why the hell would he have his like star players out there, especially with them being injury riddled all season long. I understand you're trying to, you know, get it like make sure they're at playoff speed, but at what cost? You just you pretty much almost cost yourself this game. I'm not I'm me personally I think they just cost themselves the game. Because they've been injury plagued all season long. That's probably been one of the main stories with this Los Angeles Chargers team. They found the ways to prevail throughout the season. But with that being said they're not looking good heading into playoffs. You know who is looking good going into playoffs? Jacksonville Jaguars. Duval County and Jacksonville Jaguars. I have the flag that Brett brought us last week. Right here. Nice little 25 Jacksonville Duval. But they, uh, they've, they've pretty much been in playoffs mode for like the past five weeks. Uh, probably even longer. They've, ever since they've gone on the run, they have lost the game. And... It was uh, the one in Detroit. But aside from that, they've been in the mix the entire time uh, uh, once they started going on the run. And they pretty much were in win-now mode. Like, well, they have to win every single game. If not, they're not going to be able to make the postseason. And they found a way to get in after winning against the Tennessee Titans last week. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars come out with a win here, uh, despite what the odd makers are saying. Uh, so I'll update you guys on who is picking who. Uh, but for the graphic-wise, we have uh, myself, Chris, DJ, and Eddie, and Steve all with the Jacksonville Jaguars. We have Joey and Matt with um, the Los Angeles Chargers. Mark hasn't picked, but I'm pretty sure 
Mark, being a betting man himself, would go with the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just... I, I, it's it's astounding to me that that an injury like that happens to one of your star players. Uh, some people may not think he's a star player. I think he's a star player for this Los Angeles Chargers team, the Mike Williams, and uh, it's very unfortunate. Now, my favorite time of this uh, wild card week, and we have the first game on Sunday, one o'clock kickoff: Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. <sighs> for those of you guys who are watching, you guys can obviously see the spreads uh, and the money line, all that stuff. Spread is at 13 and a half points <laughs> in favor of Buffalo, minus 900 for Buffalo, and uh, over under set at 43 and a half. Yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, we have the, the Buffalo Bills who were competing for the number one seed uh, and, uh, you know, had the unfortunate events of what happened on the Monday night game against the Cincinnati Bengals. All good news, DeMar Hamlin has been good. He's been admitted out of the hospital. And, you know, he's going to be going through the phases of the recovery. And it's not – I don't believe that he will get back in time to compete in the playoffs with the Buffalo Bills. I think this is a serious condition that um, – you know, it's a heart condition. They need, they need to really take their proper steps because you don't want to put him back out there and then, boom, he collapses again. That will be very unfortunate. So uh, glad everything is all right with DeMar Hamlin. I believe it was over um, over eight hundred uh, eight million was was donated. I'll check out again right now, but from the last time I checked, it was at eight million. We'll check it out right now. Eight point eight uh, million dollars was donated to his uh, toy drive fund. So that's amazing. Uh, but yeah, the the Buffalo Bills are the top seed in terms of the wild card teams because they're the second seed. Kansas City and the Philadelphia Eagles are the two teams that secured their number one seed and are on by this week. Um, yeah, Buffalo is 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 a powerhouse. They have a really good offense, really good defense, <laughs> and uh, I have quite the surprise for you guys when it comes to who's picking what. Um, can you can you take a guess? Can you take a guess? I'm going with the Finns, but guess what? Everyone else. In the league is going with the Buffalo Bills. Can't blame you guys. I gotta go. I gotta rock with my team. I hope I'm right with the pick. I hope the Dolphins can uh, advance because then they'll play the Kansas City Chiefs. And I would love nothing more to go to Kansas City. Hopefully, Tua will be able to play by then, and he'll be throwing bombs to Tyreek Hill. But uh, yeah, the, the Dolphins are rolling in with out Teron Armstead. Uh, without Austin Jackson, without Brandon Jones, without Byron Jones, without Nick Needham, without Tua, without Teddy. I mean, it's, 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 what can you do? Dolphins just found a way to get into the playoffs. It's weird. Uh, with that being said, you know, are the Dolphins going to win this game? I don't think so, honestly, just to be uh, very truthful. Optimistic Austin is always going to say, yeah, I would love nothing more for the Dolphins than for them to win. Uh, but, they're running into quite the spot in Orchard Park here against the Buffalo Bills. And, you know, coming out of a win here will be great for the morale. But then you're going to run into the Kansas City Chiefs. And then at that point, it's just like, can we even beat them too? Like, you have the toughest road in the playoffs, arguably. Because I think, um, yeah, because the, the Seattle Seahawks would have a tough road as well. But I think if they were, if Seattle was able to move past the 49ers, I think they would also have a chance against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles haven't looked the very best at this moment, uh, but that will be a topic for next week. Uh, but, yeah, it, the Dolphins would have to go to Buffalo, Kansas City, and then after that they would have to go against one of the top seeds remaining, which I think would be Can uh, Cincinnati Bengals. With that being said, we're going to keep it moving. We have the second game on Sunday afternoon. We have the 4-30 game, the New York Giants versus the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Minnesota is favored by three points. Uh, money line is at minus 160 for the Minnesota Vikings. And the over-under is set at 48. Now, the last time these two played, it was, it was quite the game. Like, honestly, that was probably the game of the week. They were just going back and forth at the end of the game. Uh, Saquon Barkley scores like a 20-plus yard rushing touchdown. 
uh, to, and then they scored a two-point conversion to tie it up. Next thing you know, Vikings go down the field. Not the entire field. They go, like, about midfield. Like, it's literally a 61-yard field goal, and their kicker just nails it. Boom. They make it. And uh, that's been the story for this Minnesota Vikings team. They've had a lot of close games, and they've had a lot of miraculous moments that has really propelled them to being this number three seed. Um, you have teams like the 49ers who do it in dominating fashion. You have the Minnesota Vikings who are winning those close games. And that's been the moral of the story with this Minnesota Vikings team the last couple of years. The Minnesota Vikings have always been in close games. What's been the problem? They haven't been able to win those close games. What's been the difference this year? They've been winning those close games. Now, the spread is in favor, minus three points for Minnesota. So they're insinuating that, hey, this is going to be another close game. And we think Minnesota wins by three points. Um, so I, I am, I'm going to rock with the Minnesota Vikings. I think... They're primed uh, to not go on a crazy run, but I think I think they're going to have a decent run. They, they're a pretty good team all around, offensively, defensively, special teams. I think they're a really sound team. Uh, the biggest concern is uh, Kirk Cousins. Are you going to get it done in the in the primetime window? You know, if this was the 1 o'clock game, we'll be talking about Kirk Cousins like he's a god. 4.30 and we're like, yeah, I'm not too sure. And then if it goes to the 8 o'clock window, then we're going to be like primetime Kirk Cousins. My soil the bed, you know. Um, but we do have some guys in the league going with the New York Giants. Uh, Joey is one of them. Myself and Chris are going with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Eddie's also going with the New York Giants. Then we have DJ, Matt, and Steve going with the Minnesota Vikings. Um, it's it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a close game as well. I just think this Minnesota team is way better. Uh, and when you come down to it. Who has a better wide receiver? Minnesota Vikings. Who has a better running back? I would give it 100% to the, the, the New York Giants. I do think Dalvin Cook is an incredible running back, but Saquon Barkley is just a different breed. Uh, quarterback, I would give it to Kirk Cousins. Uh, Daniel Jones, he's getting there. He's doing good. But I think Kirk Cousins edges his amount, but it's very close. I wouldn't necessarily say, like, oh, it's a no-brainer, but it's definitely like, all right, we'll get this more to Kirk Cousins. Uh, tight end. Come on, TJ Hawkinson. Come on, that guy's a beast. Uh, defense, I think the Minnesota Vikings defense is a tad bit better. They're a bit old. They're a bit slow. Uh, but they can get stops, and that's the biggest thing. But this New York Giants team, defensively, young, fast, gets to the ball. Love it. I, like, I love watching this New York Giants team, uh, especially defensively. But can they contain... Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, TJ Hawkinson, KJ Osborne, Adam Thielen. Like th this Minnesota Vikings team has good names, good solid guys. KJ Osborne, I don't know if I mentioned him before. Uh, let's go, you baby. Uh, but yeah, this this Vikings team, I think I think they have what it takes to get past this Giants team. They've already showed that they can beat them once. That's a story. Is it going to come down to the wire, and who's going to come out on top there? Now we have the final game of Sunday night. And this, as much as I would love to see Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow go head-to-head -head in the playoffs, it's, unfortunately, we're not getting that. Uh, Lamar Jackson came out and uh, tweeted about his injury. He's uh, suffered, I believe, a grade 3 PCL uh, strain, and uh, it's not looking the very best. If the Ravens somehow get past the Cincinnati Bengals this week, the possibility of him returning is very slim to none. Uh, so I do think, unfortunately, for the Simpson, uh, for the Baltimore Ravens, that their season's over. And I'm sorry, Steve. I know. <laughs> See, <laughs> everyone's on board. Everyone is on the same boat here. Everyone is going with the Cincinnati Bengals. And uh, the spread for the game is Cincinnati minus 8.5, Cincinnati money line minus uh, 455, over under set at 40, uh, 40 points, 40 and a half points. Uh, yeah, it's pretty simple here. Cincinnati is the more healthy team. Lamar Jackson being out is so crucial for this uh, Baltimore Ravens team. Their defense has been looking good. They play really aggressive, especially Roquan Smith. He's been an absolute stud, and I know my buddy over here, he's, uh, he's not too thrilled about it. And uh, <laughs> But uh, one thing I got to say is this is not the same Bengals team that went to the Super Bowl. And 
I hate to, you know, put a damper on the Bengals. They're better. But at the same time, I don't get that, you know, chip on your shoulder type of vibe. I get it. You lost the Super Bowl last year. But aside from that, they haven't really had anything that's like, yeah, this team can go on a run. They're good. Never said they were bad. But I just think they're going to be in a position that a team's going to smack them in the mouth and they're not going to be able to respond. That's honestly how I feel. I don't think it's going to happen this week, uh, but there will be a team along the line. Uh, who knows when it will happen, who is it going to be from. But I think they're going to get into a game and a team is going to come up right on the gates in them and they're not going to be able to respond. And that's very unfortunate because the Cincinnati Bengals team was competing for a number one seed, competing – uh, you know, just to be one of the top teams in the AFC all season long. Uh, they ended up winning the division by technicality, but uh, either way, I would have seen them winning the division no matter what in terms of when the season was winding down. So those are some things that I take away from this matchup. Baltimore, unfortunately, uh, Tyler Honey will be the starting quarterback, I believe. If not, it's uh, Brown Jr. And uh, I don't have too much faith in this offense without Lamar Jackson in there, unfortunately. As much as Tyler Huntley has been filling in the role and been playing pretty well, he's not that efficient, especially in the red zone. That's where they initially stall out a lot. Uh, J.K. Dobbins is running with a knee and a half. So, you know, these are things that A.J. Um, Mark Andrews gets doubled every single time, especially when Tyler Huntley is throwing the ball because they know that's the top guy. They don't have really anyone there in the wide receiver position. That's going to be very crucial on – how can this Baltimore Ravens team have success in the future? I get it. Ground and pound. They're really good at running the ball. I, don't get me wrong. I believe that. But they need to have some sort of passing game. And if Mark Andrews is your top receiver, there's nothing wrong with that. But you need to have very good complementary wide receivers on the side of that. I understand injuries have happened. I think Duvernay and Bateman were doing pretty decent. But I wouldn't necessarily say you build you know, your, your receiving core around those guys. I think you guys should – draft a guy and, and really hone in on like, all right, we need an, a top wide receiver. So there's going to be a few available during the off season. I do think that the Ravens will be in the mix for one, maybe a DeAndre Hopkins, who knows? But I hate to be pessimistic and talking about, oh, you guys are not going to win. You guys, you know, look forward to the off season. It's a, it's a hard truth because like the Dolphins are probably going to be looking forward to the off season as well. So I don't want to just be like, oh, it's just this scene. We'll move on to, Monday night's game, January 16th, 8-15 kickoff. We have the Dallas Cowboys versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Dallas is favored in Tampa by 2.5 points, minus 140 on the money line, and over-under is set at 45.5. Now, really mixed, really mixed reviews here from everyone making the picks. I'll tell you that. Um, we have some guys leaning left. We have some guys leaning right. I'm I'm stuck. I'm not entirely sure who to go with. Uh, I will tell you guys that this is probably one of the tougher decisions because the Dallas Cowboys, as much as they've been good throughout the entire season, I don't think they're that good. Um, and you know the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not far off. They they came into the playoffs with a negative record, uh, eight, eight and nine, and uh, they won the division by. <laughs> by some miracle, and, uh, you know, it's going to be tough for Tom Brady and this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team uh, to advance in the pro season, but I do think they have a chance. They are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They do have one of the best uh, quarterbacks in NFL history. They have one of the best wide receivers in Mike Evans, and not to mention we, they also have Chris Godwin. I think their tight ends have been performing well in a by committee. Uh, Cameron Bray, uh we also have uh, Kyle Rudolph. There was another guy who's been emerging. I can't think of his name right now, um, and I don't think it will come to me before I announce the picks. But we also have uh, the running back field is really nice with uh, Leonard Fournette and uh, something white. They, they've been doing really good offensively. Defensively, they've been dealing with a lot of injuries, and that's really what's plagued this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. I understand their offense has been – <laughs> lacks a day of school all season long. But the defense has been injury riddled as well. So I don't want to put it all on the offense. Uh, I think they'll find a way to get things together. 
Uh, but oh, this is tough, man. Because as much as the Dallas Cowboys have had a good season, you know, 12-5, and five, uh, we're competing for the division at the very end there and just couldn't seal the deal. And then on top of that, the Eagles won anyway. So at the end of the day, they weren't going to be able to win that game, uh, win the division. Uh, Dak Prescott, turnover machine. If the Dallas Cowboys don't run the ball, because I've seen this thing. Every game that the Dallas Cowboys throw for over 30, 40 passes, Dak Prescott at least has an interception, if not two. So what do you do if that's been the reoccurring thing? Run the damn ball. You have an, a very efficient backfield that pretty much got you a lot of these wins offensively with Tony Pollard and Zeke Elliott. Um, you know, I think that's one of the best one-two punches in all of the NFL. And the fact that you keep on putting the ball in Dak Prescott's hands, I understand you guys want to, you know, have him in a nice groove going into the playoffs. But he's, he'll be fine. Dak Prescott will be fine. Run the damn ball with Zeke and Pollard, and then maybe you guys win this game. Because guess what? It's playoffs, and this is what Tom Brady thrives in. He, he does not care that his team went into the playoffs with an 8-9 and nine record. All he knows is, hey, we just got to win the next one. We just got to win the next one. Boom. Next thing you know, they're in the Super Bowl. Like, you do not want to let this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team get hot because guess what? All the stuff we've been seeing all season with them just being unsuccessful offensively, that's going to change. They're going to have some success in this playoff game, and I get it. They're playing a Dallas Cowboys team that has a really good defense, and I know my boys, like, uh, Gonzo will like grill me if I don't <laughs> give them some prop, but at the same time he's been frustrated. He's he's seen his Cowboys team be hyped up every year, and then all of a sudden is just like, boom, fall flat on your face. Does it happen this week? I don't think so. I don't think they fall flat on their face. Uh, I'm torn between the pick. I'm not entirely sure who I'm a 100% go with. Right now, I have my pick as the Dallas Cowboys, but it could easily switch. Uh, by the way. Myself, Chris, who else we got here? He's going with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, Steve and Eddie are all going with the Cowboys. DJ, Joey, and Matt are all going with the Buccaneers. But I could flip over to that Buccaneer side. I'm not entirely sure yet. I This is probably one of the tougher games for, for me to pick because if the Dallas Cowboys don't run the ball, they're going to lose the game 100%. They will lose this game if they do not run the ball. And – but what do you mean? I mean, they need to run the ball and keep the ball out of Dak's hands so he's not throwing 40 times a game, throwing two turnovers, that this Buccaneers defense will capitalize on, put the offense in good field position, boom, Tom Brady's winning another playoff game, you know? Um, so with that being said, I, I, I just convinced myself to go with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to have a lapse in judgment, make bad play calls, and put the ball continuously in Dak Prescott's hands. As much as I'd love for Dak to, you know, be throwing the ball around, it's not the game to do it. It's not the game to do it. It's not It's not the, the time to do it at all. This is the playoffs. This is everything matters here. And uh, I think the Cowboys are going to find a way to screw it up, unfortunately. But that being said, Tampa Bay, not the best team either. So this is really one of those toss-up games. It's going to be a nice um, Monday night game on ESPN. Um, aside from that, that pretty much wraps up the wild card around the picks. Um, let me know what you guys thought, think of me going solo here. It's very tough. Uh, I'm very parched. I'm going to need some water. So I'm going to have some right now. But with that being said, uh, unfortunately for my guys over here, seasons are over. And uh, they're not, they're not going to be rooting for the Dolphins either, so. I'm here solo dolo. <laughs> With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Hopefully, the guys will be here. They won't be in a, in a corpse uh, shell and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, we'll be back for the divisional round, and uh, we'll see you guys on there. Peace.